let's head live to Switzerland to ask a chief investment officer where the smart money is going at the moment. Joining us to give us his take is Otto Vosser, CIO of RNA Research and Asset Management. Great to have you, Mr. Vosser. So, what do you make of what's happening in the markets? We had a lot of optimism out there. Stocks driving higher for a good few days. Now they're lower. Are investors starting to feel doubtful about just how much these European leaders can get done? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there was too much optimism in the market as to a comprehensive solution of the Eurozone debt crisis. This is not possible. A comprehensive solution is still 12, 18 months away. We would need some, a big leap into fiscal integration, and that's not possible politically at the moment. We would need uh, the budget process is on a much more solid footing with some constitutional amendments in every Eurozone state. So I think it's not possible to get the once and for all solution the markets were hoping for a few days ago. Are you thinking we've got to wait another 12 or 18 months to get a permanent solution on Europe, not just another five or six days? Where does that leave the equity markets, Otto? Well, equity markets have lived with the Eurozone crisis and they're going to have to live with it. We're going to get some incremental solution to the problem. Overall, the most important thing is that banks get refinanced, banks get refunded and recapitalized. If the banking sector works properly and bank credit flows <laughs> okay, then I think corporate earnings can flow and equity markets should be able to model through that crisis. Uh, we, we're still, for the next few weeks, incrementally optimistic for markets. When it comes to asset allocation, Otto, is cash king? Cash is king, a defensive allocation, I think, given the extensive problems that we have overall in the world. The U.S. economy is not growing. Europe is uh, close to recession. The Eurozone debt crisis is not resolved. So we take it from a defensive posture. Occasionally, we're buying some cyclical names in Europe that have just been beaten down too much, but overall from a defensive poacher and then taking profits once stocks have rallied, not forgetting that. Just can, can you name those names? What are you buying in practice? In practice, more of the cyclical names. We have one value stock, which is buyer on the more defensive side. Otherwise, we're buying names like Syngenta, the staffing company Adeco. We're like Siemens. We're like the Austrian Andritz, for example. We still like SAP, so all quality names, more of the defensive cyclical quality names. Now, you were talking about extensive problems just a second ago. We've got China, of course, this morning, growth slowing for the most in two years. How concerned are you about what's going on in China? Or actually, are you thinking, you know what, 8.5% to 9% over the next 6, 12 months or so, 8 about. Well, it's a bit of both. 9% is a very good growth rate, and if that can be sustained, it's going to be very helpful for the global economy. China's contributing about a third to global growth this year, and so it's an economy that we, we have to be worried about. It's so important for the world economy. We still think that China is growing at around a 9% clip for this quarter and next, so overall it's a supportive economy for the world. Last time you spoke to us, you said that you liked companies where they had a majority of their business or a high share of their business done in Asia, Swatch, Nike, Unilever, Danone, which is reporting today. Do you still hold that view, even given that we're seeing China slowing by more than some had expected? Oh, we, we think this is the biggest mega trend for the next 10 or 20 years. We're taking a lot of efforts to identify companies that do business in Asia, that have an above average share of business in Asia because we think these are the growth markets. Sometimes they're a little bit expensive, sometimes uh, some of these economies are slowing, but overall this is a, a mega trend for us. And when we're looking ahead towards growth, growth in Europe, slowing growth maybe in China, where does this leave commodities, Otto? Where are you putting your money as far as that's concerned? Is gold still the one to have a few dollars in? Gold is still uh, a good defensive bet. It, uh, rep, uh, it replaces cash to an extent in our asset allocation. Gold is mostly a bet on a lower dollar. We think the lower dollar trend is not over, so gold has a room. We're still cautious on industrial metals, uh, particularly be because we don't think the global industrial cycle is turning up anytime soon. Oil is a bit better supported. Agricultural commodities are simply too volatile for us, so our biggest bet in the asset allocation remains gold.
Okay, that's great. Otto Vasa, we have to leave it there. CIO and R of uh, RI Research and Asset Management, live from Zurich. Grateful to you. Thanks very much.